in this case, we are welcoming, welcoming new members. We have Benjamin Fisher, David Stover, and Lynn Rogo, who have uh, all uh, become members this year. And we're thrilled to have you with us. And we will be uh, introducing our honored guest speaker shortly in more, in more depth. So Nareet, you get a special introduction. So welcome everyone. I have a guest I'd like to introduce. Okay, great. Um, and I think she just joined a second ago, uh, it's Alison Sutherland, and she's coming to us from Wales. Uh -huh. And uh, she is just the immediate, just a few days ago, finished being the chairman of the board for the Rotary Action Group for Peace. And uh, Alison and I have been friends. We actually met the first time at the Atlanta convention and then after Atlanta, and, and we started uh, rooming together, get Airbnbs and everything together, you know, at the next ones, and became friends. And now we see each other a, a minimum of three or four times a week on assorted meetings, oh, rotary boy. meetings. And Allison is one of my uh, one of my heroes, one of my champions. And oh, so, um, this is well, Allison. welcome, Allison. I'm so glad you could join us. That's that's marvelous and great timing. <laughs> And before we go any further, I want to thank our wonderful event planners who held an absolutely delightful party for our club on Sunday, <clears throat> this past Sunday, July 4th. The ever gen uh, generous Lynn and Mark Rogo hosted the party at their home. It was a perfect location. And the delightful party committee, and I hope I haven't left anybody out of Tom Barron, Diane Good, and Ali Shoji. I think it was a, the event was hugely successful and, and a lot of fun. And I really thank you all uh, for your efforts. I know you all had a lot of other things going on. So to pull off a successful party at the same time really is, is quite a coup. So thank you all very much. And July is far and away our biggest month for birthdays. It's kind of astonishing to look at the length of this list. As it, it, it almost seems like it ought to be divided into weekly installments so, <laughs> so that it's easier to take everybody in. But, but very happy birthday to all of our members who are celebrating this month. And two wedding anniversaries. Peter was telling us that he and Shirley went up to Sausalito over the weekend to uh, celebrate their anniversary. <clears throat> Pardon me. And Amy and Brian Whitney will be celebrating their anniversary on the 14th of this month. Oh, nice. And we have... You missed, you missed one. <laughs> a couple of rotary. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, you, you Ron, missed one. You missed one. Were you saying something? my anniversary is on the 23rd of July. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. I will, then we'll, we'll amend the slide for next time. <laughs> Good to know. Thank you for telling me. And I'll make sure that it's a club runner. I also encourage everyone to periodically check their club runner profile to make sure it's complete because a lot of uh, people's key dates are not included in the, in the profiles and we don't want to leave anybody out. But knowing Ron, I suspect yours is there and I'm got to look. So I'll how many fix years that. Is that. Thank Ron? you for, for telling Ron, how many years? Yeah, I mean, 43. That's amazing. That's impressive. Nice run. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I'll say, I'll say that's great. Two rotary anniversaries, at least that we know of this month. Again, Peter Moore on July 1st, 24 years. That's impressive. Ed Gold on July 10th, 18 years. There's wonderful longevity in this club. It really has always awed me uh, since joining. I'm just trying. Oh, here we go. Okay. So, and this, uh, once again, is our leadership team for this year. I, I thank the board, which for the most part has agreed to uh, stay on and serve with me for a second year. We have 
some notable changes. One is that Chris Gaynor has volunteered to step up and become president again next year, which makes him president elect for this year. Diane Good had been secretary for this year. She is now an assistant governor for District 5280, and she will remain on the board, but Tom Barron is stepping up as secretary. So thanks to Tom and congratulations to Diane. I think that's just awesome uh, recognition for you. Uh, membership, Michael Newman asked to step back because he's extremely busy with work. Mark Rogo has agreed to step up as membership chair and to continue working with the membership subcommittee of our long range strategic planning committee in formulating our membership development policies going forward. So I think that's huge. And we have somebody coming in named Mohammed Jayusi. Is that someone you know, Marsha? Um, it's someone I know. Oh, it's someone. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Okay, okay. And he just disappeared. So when he comes back on, I'll let him in. <laughs> so. As, as you can see, oh, and then also John Keefe will be coordinating the speakers for this year. So I'm very excited. We have a strong, committed, and active board. And as I said, I have every confidence that we're going to have an excellent year. And as some of us were talking ahead of time, we announced in our club assembly recently that we will be begin our live meetings in September on September 9th. And we will continue meeting virtually until September. And then <clears throat> we will move to a schedule of two in-person meetings and two Zoom meetings each month. The first in-person of the meeting, uh, first in-person meetings of the year will be September 9th and September 23rd. And then from uh, for October onward, our live meetings will be the first and the third meeting of each month with Zoom meetings on the second and the fourth. And months with five weeks offer opportunities for in-person fellowship opportunities, which it's clear to me everybody is looking forward to. And one thing we will also be doing is over communicating about the location of each week's meeting so we don't have people going to the Luskin Center when we're really meeting on Zoom or vice versa, uh, for example. So very exciting news about the Luskin Center. And some of us were talking early about the earlier about the fact that the faculty center notified Diane recently that the reopening has been delayed to March of next year. So we would not have had the option of going back there anytime soon had we wanted to. But I think a lot of us are very excited about the Luskin Center and feel it's a wonderful upgrade for us and, and that we're all looking forward to seeing each other in person on a more frequent basis. And uh, just a heads up, in two weeks, we will be inducting new members, two of whom are with us today. I will be sharing more information on that. And our district governor, Giddy Javid, will do us the honor of attending to actually make the induction. So that will be exciting as well. And Someone at the party, and I won't, uh, they shall remain nameless, told me they'd like to be inducted next month uh, as a new member. So, so I said, let's make this a monthly event. Wouldn't that be great? Now, I'm sorry, I'm just having a little cursor issue here. That is curious. Okay. Here we go. Rotary International has announced the upcoming convention site. So next year, the convention will be held in Houston, followed by Warsaw and Singapore, which should be fascinating trips to be continued. And as a 
As a fun coda on our recent talk about the Beatles, Ringo Starr turned 81 this week. Actually, yesterday was his birthday. Doesn't he look amazing for 81? And he is a sculptor. They had a party for him in a park in Beverly Hills. He lives in Beverly Hills. And he donated this sculpture of his uh, to the city of Beverly Hills. And it has been placed in one of the Beverly Gardens parks. So I thought that was kind of fun. Um, to get a quick update on him. And now I would like to ask Lynn Rogo to introduce our honored guest speaker for today. Lynn? Unmute myself. Hi, everybody. It was wonderful having uh, most of you at our home on Saturday night. It was a lot of fun. Thank you for coming. Um, so I'm very excited. You remember um, less than a year ago, I think that Nareet was our guest speaker. That's right. And Nareet and I have become very good friends. Um, when I realized that I only met Nareet a year and a half ago, it, it, uh, on, on one hand, because it was just before COVID started, it feels like forever ago. And on the other hand, it feels like yesterday. Um, <laughs> Nareet, is, Nareet is my hero. She had a hugely successful corporate career and then she and Claire Lassen decided that they wanted to devote their lives to what they felt was important in this world, um, which is starting sort of at the bottom up to create peace and harmony uh, and leadership going forward. And, um, you know, I, I, I always simply describe the school as just because our parents hate each other and want to kill each other doesn't mean we have to. <laughs> and, um, uh, what they, you know, the, the children who are there from all over the world, I think 81 countries, I, I might be too many countries, but for instance, a Palestinian girl lives with an Israeli girl and, you know, people who would never even speak to each other live together and work together. And Nareed, I think I'm going to let you tell that wonderful story. Uh, we were lucky enough, Nareed was here and Nancy and Mark and I had lunch with her. Um, and you can tell the story of what happened. Everybody wondered whether or not the Palestinian kids were gonna be allowed to come back to this Jewish school. And Narita, I'm gonna let you tell them what happened. Okay, so hi everybody. And actually I'm very happy as we have four of our students with us today. So um, I will talk a little bit, but what you really want to is hear them. Um, so, um, I have with me, I'll introduce them and they will talk soon, but I will uh, say a few words first. Um, with me today are Muhammad Jayusi, who is first because he, since you, many of you met him last year, he became a graduate of the school. He just finished his two years at DHIS. And together with us are also Tena Lapid, uh, success, Tena is from Israel and uh, you will meet all of them. Success from Liberia and Fation from Kosovo. So you will hear all their stories and how they got to come to GHIS. Um, should we maybe close this? Um, do, do you see us? Um, so a few words, I know I met many of you already. Yeah, maybe that's better. I met many of you already last year and some of you all also met our students, but in short, um, as Lynn said, I met Lynn and Mark Rogo a year and a half ago when they were in Israel. It's unbelievable because it was really just before COVID, like when they could still travel. And um, from the day we met first in Israel, we became friends, we just, fell in love with each other. And we are lucky enough that they decided to adopt GHIS and me and became so close to us and to what we're doing. So GHIS, and they actually introduced me to Nancy and to Rotary in LA and to Rotary uh, in Israel. So now we are a proud member of the Rot Rotary support, which is really a, a big difference for DHIS. So as Lynn said, we are a school 
a com and which is a community, which is a home. We're a very young school. We're only three years old. 25% of our student body are Jewish students from Israel. 25% are Arab students from Israel. And the other half, 50%, are from all over the world. And in, with our four students today, you will meet a little bit of each one of them. The unique thing here is that in Israel, everything is separated. So usually Jews and Arabs will not go together to school. In the public system, there will be schools for Jewish kids and school for Arab kids and um, towns and villages where the Jewish live and learn in Hebrew and others where they live and learn in Arabic. And on normal circumstances, they don't have an opportunity to meet. At GHIS, they don't only meet, they live together, they learn about conflict resolution and they lead together. And this gives them the tools to let later go as Jews and Arabs from Israel and as international students into their adult, adult life, actually understanding and appreciating diversity and people who are different. Understanding how important it is to listen and respect people who think different than you, who grew up different than you, who has a different background or a different religion, you know, a different culture, and they come together to this impossible island of hope at GHIS. And really, I admire them because it's not always easy, and they're taking an amazing risk, and they're they're doing magic. They are our real stars, and I will introduce them one by one. Um, Muhammad, as the, the senior person, can you introduce yourself shortly, who you are and where you're from? Um, hello, everyone. It's good to see you again. <laughs> um, thank you for having us. And hi to my fellow schoolmates. <laughs> um, success, Daina, Patian. Um, so yeah, my name is Mohammed. I'm gonna be 19 in eight days. <laughs> I'm a fresh graduate from uh, Givat Haifa International School. And um, I'm originally from uh, Jerusalem, East Jerusalem specifically, from uh, a small village called Esoia. It's an Arab Muslim village. And um, 2019, uh, August of 2019 was the time where I discovered DHIS and a whole new journey in my life started. And um, so, yeah, that's uh, briefly me. <laughs> um, we will get back to you, Muhammad. Tena. Hi, uh, my name is Tena, and I live in Efrat, Bush Etzion. And um, I don't know, I'm 17. And yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe a little bit what it means that you live in ten in Efrat uh, Gush Etzion. Um, before I came to GHIS, I studied in an Ulpena, which is a religious school for girls, like Jewish religious. And um, well, I don't know. Gush Etzion is in the kind of what people like to call West Bank, Judea and Samaria. So coming to a school where I study with um, with Arabs or not only with girls was kind of crazy and I also didn't speak English at home. So it was also kind of weird, but I think I'll tell you more about that later. Sure, yeah. sure. Um, success. Hi, I'm success. I'm from Liberia. I'm turning 17 soon. And it was also great. I like now I'm a 12th grader at the Giva Hafiva International School. And Fakyon? Hi everyone, my name is Fatian Shlaku. I'm from Kosovo. Um, thank you so much for having us today. I am moving along with Tena and Success to 12th grade in GHS. And yeah, that's me. So let's, let's continue with you, Fatian. What a crazy idea to come to school in Israel. Like you could study in Kosovo or study anywhere else in the world. Tell us a little bit about this decision. How come you came here? And um, um, maybe a little bit about whether it stood to your expectation or not. Well, 
Before I came to JHS, I was an exchange student in the US. I lived in Arkansas for one academic year. And in our town, we had um, seven exchange students that were uh, from Jordan, Netherlands, Germany, Kosovo, Japan, Brazil, and more countries. And when I was there, it just opened up a light in myself and in my life that directed me to GHIS. And once I saw the beauty and the significance of living with people from different cultural background, I was amazed and I just wanted, I, I wanted that to be part of me for the rest of my life. And basically I heard from a friend that he was, um, he was accepted and he was uh, his first year in GHIS. And he told me more about school, the school. And he told, when I was telling him about the significance of people living in, living in a town from di different backgrounds, he said, you have to come to GHIS. It's the perfect place for you. And it was the perfect place. He told me all those things about it, about the shared society and building uh, future leaders for the world. But it's just when someone tells you something, you don't really believe it until you see it for yourself. And I didn't have much expectations and I just wanted to enjoy this new journey of mine. And I did, and my expectations were, the reality was so much different than what, what I expected because the community in GHIS is built very differently from any other community that I've been part because as some of you guys know about the conflict between the Jews and Arabs in Israel and our community is a living proof that Jews and Arabs, but not also them, but also internationals can live together. And I think the beauty of it is amazing. And the mission and the values that GHIS holds for us and for our future is really, really amazing. In our school, we basically live together. We go to school together. We have different activities that help us enable leadership skills in order for us to understand and solve conflicts, which I think is really important, especially in today's society. And there's just so much more to talk about um, GHS, but I would also like to have my fellow friends to talk about it a bit more, but I'm just very grateful that my parents were able to give me this opportunity and I'm grateful for every single one of my friends and every single um, teacher and staff member and Nurit as well for establishing this because this was really a life-changing opportunity for me and I'm sure as well for other people. So um, success will be back with you soon, but let's talk a little bit with Muhammad and Tena. So both of you came from religious schools, from an one gender um, school before you came to DHS. And it was a very unusual and brave decision for both of you to decide to leave your home and leave your background and come to a school that not only has um, both genders, but also has Jews and Arabs and internationals and so different from the way that you grew up. So um, Tena, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about like the beginning and your background and how come did you choose to make such a big jump? Okay, um, so as I said, I studied in Ulpena and it was great, but I felt like I wasn't challenged enough, both academically and socially. And so I started um, my first degree in political science, but still I felt like something is missing. And then a week before school started, I first heard of the school, which was very like rushed and spontaneous, but I decided to go for it. Um, and it was a very kind of crazy decision, um, not only because um, I'm religious and it's a not religious school and you know, there are boys and all, but also because um, it's with Arabs. And like, I know I speak Arabic and I have a few Arab friends from my area, but to actually study with them in school was something that I've never really thought of before. 
um, especially because uh, my family is very strongly uh, hurt by terrorism. Uh, my grandfather and my uncle were uh, murdered in a terror attack in 1993. And it's something that's very present in our family. And we're very accepting, but we're also like kind of guarded because of this um, kind of trauma. So uh, coming to the school was definitely not something um, trivial or normal in any way for me to do. And um, yeah, it was kind of crazy. Even on my way to the school on the first day, my mom kept asking me, are you sure it's the right decision? Maybe we should turn around and go back and like, because it's so different than anything else that I've ever experienced. Um, so yeah. Okay, soon we'll, we'll ask you about what happened in the last year, but Mohammed, tell us a little bit about the neighborhood you came from in Jerusalem. So hi again. Um, so yeah, so I um, I grew up in Esawiya. It's a small village in uh, East Jerusalem. And um, I was born and raised there. I went to education schools there for primary, secondary, and also high school. But what was uh, a bit different about this village is that I, I would like to also add as the Ibn said, I, I was not challenged at all, not, not challenged enough, uh, where I studied either in the classroom or outside of the classroom environment. And the community there is, is very um, strict in a way that I, I used to call it like as a closed bubble. And I had at some point in my lifetime where I started being aware of my surrounding, I had to isolate myself within a smaller bubble so I can, you know, make sure I'm not affected by any any negativity or something that is not, I'm not benefiting from. For example, um, you know, in, in my class uh, classrooms, half of my um, classmates were put in the school just because their parents want them to be there and not somewhere else. Um, and, Many of them were at least in jail once in their lifetime for being caught or being um, for throwing rocks uh, between the clashes that happens in my town very often. So the classroom environment was not really educational, was not really, um, it's not a place for me where I can gain knowledge and I'm a very uh, thirsty person for knowledge. And um, Living like living and studying there was was really uh, challenging for me, but I um, I did my best to get the best out of what I can, and um, I also lived in um, in a family um, environment. So I also had so my, my my life was from school to home, home to school. I didn't really have much for interaction outside. I did had, but um, I, I I I felt that I don't feel that, like connected to the place I am being in. And I felt like I, I want to have more than, more opportunities, uh, more, more, more things that I can um, develop myself and, um, you know, gain a lot from this big world. I, I thought at some point that I'm only living in Esauia <laughs> and everything is happening in Esauia is happening, happening everywhere else. Um, but um, it's not. <laughs> That's how I discovered uh, GHIS. It was um, it was a very <laughs> big opportunity for me. But basically, um, that's um, that's Esuia. I I think the biggest thing for me was um, you know transferring from living in um, in just a one gender school and studying for like my entire life to a diverse place, not only by genders but also nationalities and religion wise. I think that was um, that was a real life changing experience for me until now, and and it's it has had a very big impact on me that now I live the school I feel like it's that's the type of environment I want to be in forever because I feel this is the place where we all should be living in not only you know studying because I feel you know we are we're all different in in so many ways but we have, we share so much in common no matter what our nationality or no matter what our religion. And I think that's what I got to learn living and studying in GHAS. So yeah, <laughs> that's one of the things uh, I got to learn. 
Um, we, we will get back to you both, but let's talk a little bit with success. So success, you went to school in Liberia and what a big change, what a big decision it is to go when you're only 16 out of the country. Tell us a little bit about how come you decide to do this huge change. Um, okay, so I'm from Liberia and in my country, we don't have much opportunity as like other countries. So like my life here was just trying to go to school and just learning what my school offered because in Liberia, we have like 14 subjects and it's like compulsory that we take all. You don't actually have a choice. So being a person that is very curious to know and to like push forward, not just to stay within the place I grew up or be among people that think exactly like me. I felt like I was not growing up as a person. So when I heard about GSIS, I thought like it was a great opportunity to go to another country, especially because like I'm a Christian and going to Israel is like a big thing. And going there, it's a diverse school. I'm going to meet people from different areas. I'm going to live with different people. The educational system is different. So it was like a challenge that I knew I could overcome. And I decided to do it mainly because of the social benefits, going out there, meeting new people, having friends that like like you can actually build a relationship that you're going to take after your high school year. And yeah, like that was my main reason. And it was great. Like I went to Israel, I met different people. It was challenging, but also great. Great. Um, so as I said before, our school focuses on leadership and conflict resolution. And a lot of what's going on is actually led by the student. So they're highly involved in what's happening in the school. And sometimes to a level that they say it's too difficult to be involved in so much and to make the decisions. And um, we, the, as administration, really listen to them and follow them. And Fatyon is one of our student leaders. He was elected as one of our leaders. So Fatyon, maybe you will talk a little bit about what it means to be a leader in the school and a little bit about the student life and how involved you all are. Well, I would like also to add to that that Tana is my co-student leader here. And me, Tana, and two other friends of us, we are, um, we are, we compromise the student leadership team in our school. And student, um, the student leadership team is um, a team that in a way builds the bridges between the student body and also the administration. And um, we are the ones who who um, who tra uh, transact any message from the student body to the administration or vice versa. And for me to be elected, it's been an amazing pleasure because I can see from the votes, but also throughout the, um, the journey that I had as a student leader, that the student, um, my friends in the community trust me and it's been, an, it's been an amazing experience because I have really developed some leadership skills and I have, I have been part of the leadership team while we had, um, we had um, the conflict, the recent conflict between, um, between Israel and Hamas. And that time was very stressful for a lot of students and also stressful and difficult at the same time. And for me to be there along with my friend, with my student leadership team for the students, it's just been amazing because I know that they can trust me and I know that they can trust me for them to relieve the stress, the pain, and also for me to um, attain some leadership skills by, um, by, by talking with my uh, Jewish friends and also Arab friends, I think has helped me a lot to understand the conflict itself because from an international perspective in the school you're just like in the middle and then you would have the Jewish friends and also the Arab friends and for me to be an international but also student leader to help the bridges between them and between us three 
it's uh, it's been a pleasure. And I also had um, uh, Mohammed here. He was a previous student leader, and also st previous student leaders. I know that we um, ask them for a lot of help because this uh, role is not easy, and it takes a lot of dedication and effort in our community. And maybe Tana can add something on on that. Um, I think you said it very well, like that. Um, it was also, it was an experience both to be like in the leadership and also um, everything like around the elections because you had to actually uh, make a speech and have a debate and discover kind of new qualities that you didn't even, like you didn't even know you have. Um, so really standing in front of a big crowd and, and expressing yourself, it was also um, a very interesting experience. And yeah, the ability to actually help students in the school where they, when they feel that there is something that should be fixed. And uh, I don't know, this ability to listen to people and to actually have the power to do something with it is, um, is inspiring. So yeah, that's what I have to add. Can I add one thing to Taina and Fatian? So sure. just to add to that is that, you know, our school, we have leadership in every aspect of everything we do. Like all of us, the 100 students have our own way to contribute in leadership. We run, we have uh, committee heads, we have people who lead uh, projects. Um, I don't know if you will be explaining about the uh, CAS also program, but the student body is where it's a more intense, where people who would choose to, you know, develop, you know, more uh, leadership skill. Um, this is where we, me and Taina and Patian, you know, we ran together, we ran for the student body and um, for me personally and for my fellow uh, friends who ran by the time when the corona started <laughs> it was a very challenging time to run when we all had to be away but uh, in general i feel the leadership aspect in the school is really uh, is really something we really focus on in every in, in every day in uh, in our life and at the school and uh, no matter if we were student leaders or just <laughs> regular uh, students who go to the to classes but um you know we represented the student body where you know because it's not easy to run it's where in the end we're our teenager and we have you know our regular people so <laughs> it brings a lot of challenges and it's um it's what's unique about our school is that we were able to as Fatia mentioned we, we were able to build a bridge of communication between us as students and also as you know, representing the, the administration and be able to communicate clearly of our needs and how can we improve life quality on campus as well. Um, and I think this is, this is really a unique experience um, for everyone who chooses to be a part of. Um, so yeah. I would, if I can add, I would also emphasize on the fact as a student leader, we really developed um, and I could also see on Tana as well, but also myself, that we really developed a lot of leadership skills. But I think what's the most important that I realized being a student leader, um, because before I was a student leader, I really wanted that experience so I can help my friends in a way that I never could. And also um, uh, develop some um, some attributes in myself that I thought that, that I didn't have. But what I also learned is that just being part of GHIS community, being a student in that community itself is being a student leader because just being in that school itself will bring out a lot of qualities that I, it brought a lot of qualities such as leadership skills that I never thought that I would have in myself. And now I can use those skills in my future chapters of the life. You know, um, I will tell from my perspective, um, a lot of time I'm asked, part of what you're saying here is listening skills and respecting each other's and as part of leadership skills. And I'm asked how this community coped with what happened in Israel, the big riots and everything in the last May. And I can tell you from my perspective that it was over a weekend where there was a Muslim holiday, or it was for a while, but um, there was a weekend where, where everybody was away 
There was Eid al Fitr, the big holiday for the Muslims at the end of Ramadan, and Shavuot, which is a big holiday for the Jewish people. So it was a weekend and all the students were away and we were sitting there with the faculty saying, will they even come back? You know, everybody is home. Students, international students have host families. Everybody was away. Will they even return to a school that is so diverse and where uh, we know that many times at their communities back home, people will tell them, are you crazy? At times like that, you're going to school with a Jewish friend at, or with Jewish people? Are you going to school with Arab people? You guys are crazy. And many times their homes or their communities are not exactly supporting this decision that these brave young people have of studying together, especially at times of tension. And it was over a weekend, a long weekend. So on Monday, everybody was away. On Tuesday morning, all of the students came back to school, all of them, the, uh, the Jews, the Arabs, and the internationals. We had some guest speakers. We had a father of an Arab girl came to talk about how it feels to be an Arab person in Israel, like from the minority. And we had another uh, family coming, another father uh, from a kibbutz near the Gaza Strip, talking about how it is to live under the missiles all the time. And it was very interesting to hear both perspectives. And what I can say that again, looking at this group of students, how they listened to these guest speakers, how they reacted and, you know, they openly voiced some concerns and some disagreement, but in such a respectful way that um, I said, if there's one place I want to be in the world that today it was GHIS. And after that, they had dialogue circles where they had an opportunity to talk about how they want to be active citizens and what it means to be active citizens and how they can, um, by talking and leading and exactly what they're talking about can make a difference in the country where we live in, but also in any other country. You know, where Fatin comes in from in Kosovo, there was a big, a big uh, conflict that happened not so long ago. So, uh, and where success comes from in Liberia, there was a big conflict not so long ago. So how this generation and the students at GHIS take on a pound ourselves, uh, themselves to be active citizens and go out to the society and take what they're learning in school back to their communities and talk to people. And I know I already heard from Muhammad, for example, that his uncle are already changing perspectives on some things, right? So when they talk here about leadership and share their experiences with you, it's actually really something they take upon themselves and, and want to take it into their life. And I'm sure they will take it beyond now into their adult. So I just wanted to give my perspective. But I think one other very interesting thing that we didn't really talk about too is um, your whole learning experience at GHS that I know is also developing a lot of things that you don't maybe have had an opportunity, you didn't have an opportunity to develop in your school before. So, um, and I do want to start talking about IB and um, so, I don't know if you, any of you are, are uh, familiar with the IB, International Baccalaureate. That is the international program that we're teaching in the school and the students get their international uh, IB diploma. Okay, um, I'll just, I would like to add something really quick to what you said that um, one of the most significant things that I've learned in this school is that you really don't have to agree with someone in order to live with them and love them and be friends with them. Like I can fight with people and yell at them like all day and then just sit together for lunch and be best friends and forget there is even any difference of opinion between us. So that's one of the most amazing things that I've experienced in the school. And about the IV, um, I think it's the, the most awesome uh, high school program there is because you actually get to choose what you study, um, which is something I've looked for like a really long time. 
there are uh, six um, kind of topics and in each one uh, you choose one course. Um, there is first language, uh, second language, um, math, um, science, arts, and um, humanitarians. And we have um, global politics, which is a very interesting class and uh, world religions, which is also really interesting. Like and Tana, may, maybe uh, share, how is that different from what you, the way you studied before? Um, first of all, like you have your own private kind of like schedule. So I can take uh, theater and biology and world religions, for example, and someone else can study like completely different topics. And there is no like class that is separated. There's just a cohort and each person like studies their own things, which is like much more interesting. And what was it, let's say? <laughs> Um, so yeah, there, there are like three components. There is the classes, the EE, which is an extended essay, and it's an opportunity to really make high quality academic work and about the topic, again, of your interest. And there is also the CAS, which is creativity, activity, and service. Um, and that's also a place where many students show their um, leadership and things that interest them. Uh, for me, for example, I used to do Taekwondo professionally before I came to the school. And um, and like I got the opportunity to like continue doing it in the school as a cast. And, oh, how is it different from which me? which means which means oh which means yeah. that I can um, like uh, I um, along with um, another student from Poland and another one who's an Arab like got together to teach martial arts to other students as our cats, as our kind of service to the community. And- um, Great. Now I'm going to ask Safes, since you've talked about art, I'm going to ask Safes to share with us a little bit more about your amazing art project. And um, like, you know, I went to, the, to see their art project and Safes did such a shocking and open and amazing project that I would like you to share with everyone. Thank you, Nareed. Um, So I'm an art student. I take visual arts. And first, let me just give a brief summary about the course. Like normally visual arts, like back at home when I heard visual, I was like not interested because it was just about doing something random. But coming to GSIS, in our art class, it's all about being creative, putting yourself out, like putting your ideas into reality, like something that is bothering you, like issues that you're facing, you can put it into art. And it's a great way to have like that belief because when you're doing it, it's like, you know, I'm doing it to show it to my community and I want my artwork to be like an interpretation of who I am. So the idea we have to do an art exhibition, like is part of the I we work and we had a mini exhibition a few months ago and I decided to do my exhibition about something that my country faced which is rape and it was it was like a big challenge talking about something that really hurt you and putting it into art like actually making sculptures and doing paintings that is going to present what you feel it was really hard but being in a, a supportive community I had a lot of support from different people, the art teacher, the art class, we all support each other to make it a success. And I was able to do it and present it in front of so many people. And I was amazed by how supportive they were. People came to me, asked me questions, and it's just great because I never imagined myself putting out my emotions or like issues that I have into art and people welcoming it the way my community did. So it's like really so amazing. Success is it something you could have ever done back home to do an art exhibition about rape and how you feel as a woman? No, back at home in my previous school, there was not an opportunity for you to actually do what you feel because talking about something like that in front of a whole school, it was like kind of forbidding because you couldn't just speak about things freely. But when I came to GSIS, I got the idea and I spoke to my teacher. I was shocked when she said, you can actually do it. It's a great idea. And I was like, wow, this is something that 
I never imagined ever doing in my life. And they made my dream come to pass because I did it and I felt proud. Great. Actually, um, Nancy asked me to allow everybody to ask questions in the last five minutes that we have. So if you, anyone wants to ask a question, any one of the students or them as a group or us, then Richard, yes. I just want to congratulate uh, all of you. This is Wait, so encouraging. If only the adults could play nice together as you guys <laughs> learn to love each other. <laughs> well, this school is creating a new generation of adults. I think that's that the problem. Problem. Exactly. Yes. The, the future looks that. good. <laughs> I want Thank to give you. Lynn a chance. Lynn wanted to say something. OK. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that since our first visit with Nareet, um, we have come together in Rotary and have a global grant to benefit GHIS. And I think we raised, I'm trying to think, maybe $50,000, right, Nareet, for this grant. Um, and so we're all very proud of that. And our club contributed to that, which is wonderful. And we're hoping to have another grant going next year. Nareet, will you please give them a brief summary of what you, I know you haven't yet received the money actually, but you've done the work already. Um, yeah. The money is in the, the Haifa Rotary account. And we're trying to get it out of there where it's been for six months over to Nareet. But Nareet, can you tell them what you've accomplished sure. with that money? Sure. Thank you. So actually um, the grant that Rotary gave you gave us is the basis of what we're doing in DHIS and that's for the whole profound kindness program. So first of all, we had um, a conflict resolution specialist which led the program and lived with us on campus until recently. Um, and she is amazing to me. And she is a specialist in conflict resolution and she led the students to a lot of what you're hearing today started with she and her profound kindness. Um, and she started even a kindness, did you call it the kindness committee or the kindness police? <laughs> <laughs> um, that talked about how you actually, exactly like Tena said, how you live with people in a community and you can become friends even if you think very differently from each other. And a lot of what they do at the school and the workshops they're going around is about that, about conflict resolution and how you deal with conflict. And actually together with Sri, she built a group of students who kept um, on with what she started with the workshops. And I think you had a kindness evening just before the end of the year, right? Um, that was led by the profound, profound Kindness Committee. And it's exact, It's actually the basis of everything that each one of these students spoke about today, about you know crossing these boundaries and respecting people that think differently than you and um, learning how to sit together with people who come from a very different narrative, but now you will want to become friends. So um, the grant actually is the basis of what DHIS is doing. It's like leading us through everything, all life on campus. And together. That's so impressive. More questions? Do we have more questions? You know, there's a lot to take in. Nareen, I, I just personally can't congratulate you and your students enough for the marvelous work that you're doing. These are very impressive young people and seem far more mature to me than secondary students. If, if I didn't know, I would have guessed you were in the latter years of college. Mm -hmm. And the work that you're doing is so inspiring, it gives me great hope for the future. Thank you very much. And thank you for the opportunity to be with you again. And in the first meeting of your year. So yes. this is a, <laughs> a great opportunity. Um, and thank you, Lynn and Mark, again, for being amazing supporters and friends. And it, it was great to meet 
all of you in person, Nancy and uh, Lynn and Mark, and maybe I'll meet more people in person, or maybe um, Muhammad can uh, success in fact and we'll meet you in person. If you come to Israel, you're always welcome to come. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, let's stay in touch. We're very interested in hearing how your your school and your students develop and, and move forward. And I think it's just fascinating. So thank you so much for being thank with us. And I thank each of you students for having the courage to join us and share your stories. So great to meet you all. Hope to see you again. Everybody have a wonderful week. Our club will meet again next Thursday, same time, same place. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much. Safe and well. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.